Norman! Keep quiet! Okay, it's quiet. No. No. Norman, keep quiet, please. Thanks! <laughs> Tasha. Hi, and I'm Yan. And today we are going to be spilling the tea on what it's like to be an animal presenter here in Singapore. To start the game, each player will draw five question cards from the deck. Players will take turns answering a question from the deck. Players will also be given three action cards each where they can skip, swap or switch at any point of time. For skip, you can skip the question. Swap, you can swap the cards with your opponent. Switch. Get your opponent to answer instead. Who wants to start first? Mia. Yeah, okay. because you're older. Bloody hell. Is training wild animals the same as training a pet animal? The the fundamentals and uh, base, basics of animal training are all the same. Oh wait, I'm supposed yeah, to ask her, right? Almost the same but slightly different in terms of trust with the animal. Wild animals take a bit more time in terms of allowing you to go near them. And it differs with every single animal. It's just the difference in species. Does it get boring doing the same show multiple times a day? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm only human. There are days when it's like the same. Yeah. But there are days where somebody will just do something funny and then as a presenter, you just can't hold it in, like you laugh long. You, like your clique will fall on stage and then she cannot pick herself up. You know, these kind of things. Are you talking about me? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's true. So I was with my colleague and then after that we were carrying this Burmese python. So the snake went for a swim and what I had to do was like take out the snake and bring it back. So I pick it up, I'm like, I'm so cool, everyone's looking at me. <laughs> Move back and I trip and I fell on the back with a Burmese python on you like... And my friend just kept... Laughing and she pick up the snake and not me la. True or false? I prefer working with animals than my colleagues. <laughs> I think I prefer working with my colleagues than the animals. I love the animals, yes. But I think the colleagues, my colleagues listen better to me than my animals sometimes. <laughs> because when the animals misbehave, even when you talk to them, they'll just look at you and today is not the day for you, then they'll just do something else. Whereas for my colleagues, if I say you do this, please for me can, and they'll say no problem, Tasha. You see? <gasps> oh my god, I love this. What are some things that zoo visitors do that are annoying? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna like red out on them. <laughs> Your turn. The switch. Our show here, right? Our sitting capacity is very limited. So there are times where we cannot really fit in a person or even a group. And then they'll tell me, then I pay here, but I cannot come and watch a show. And then you say, oh, it's okay, you can come back for the next one. And then they'll say, I'm going home already. Then you're like... <coughs> and then there are some annoying things like, can you tell me what time is the 2.30 show? <laughs> that typical like, okay, please do not touch. And then when you are just like not looking, and they're like... <coughs> and then your animal runs off. How about you, Yen? You know, I switched it, man. When is keeping animals in cages and forcing them to perform animal cruelty? Ooh, hot! Uh, you don't. <laughs> don't. Switch! Opponent answers instead. Sneaky! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go for the second part first. Huh? Forcing them to perform animal cruelty. If they don't want to do their behaviour for that particular show, then it's okay. Is either we completely cut the segment mm. or if there is another animal that could do exactly the same behaviour then we take the other one and then we revisit that behaviour after show to just find out whether it's like a one-time thing is the animal sick or what And there's no cage, there's no cages okay. Yeah, there are like housing facilities and even then it's furnished to mimic their natural environment Is this something we can stop for a while? Can hang on okay? Ah, uh, who's at the back, ah? Uh? Norman! Norman! Keep quiet! Okay, he's quiet. No. No. Norman, keep quiet, please! Thanks! <laughs> of course! <laughs> There's always a diva animal. Okay, I have a diva author. Her name is Mia. 
So she's actually smarter than some of my handlers. <laughs> if she don't want to do her behaviour, there is nothing I can do to force her. It's better in the first place to just give them the break. And most of the time, it works better for the animal. Oh, nice. What happens to animals in the zoo when they get old? Wow. So when they get old, they will go through a... Quality life assessment. Correct, a quality life assessment to determine whether we need to let them go. We have a program for primates. We retire them in a facility meant for primates. And the hope is that we can have people view this facility as well because since they are not on show, we have to ensure that they don't get bored. Like every day is not just another day. But there are also cases where we have to say goodbye mm. to really old animals. And it's never a nice process. I think I've cried through a few. Because like some of these animals, you work through with them, like oh, with them through their entire lifespan. You see them as a baby and then, you know. There are a couple of animals that we have that actually have to let go because of old age. Uh, and we actually tried to keep them going, but sometimes the animals will kind of tell you that it's time to go for them. It's so easy for people to judge, you know, like, oh, you just put down an go. animal like that. It's not. It's never easy. We go through stages of QLA to really determine that it's time for an animal to go. And even then, it's never easy. True or false? Why do you always get true or false? True or false, the animals choose their handlers and not the other way around. Mm, that is so very true. For my side, we have got uh, capybaras. So if they like you, they'll do everything to the best of their ability. If they really like you, right, they will even allow you to scratch them and they lie on their back and you scratch their belly. But if they don't like you, uh, you'll be going one way and when you turn right, your capybara is nowhere inside because he's going the other way. One of our parrots, an umbrella cockatoo. He's a sweetheart. Actually, I can bring him out now and have a cuddle actually. So he's my favourite and also one of my capybara. Okay, mine, uh, I think, would be this uh, male uh, pig tail my cat. His name is Kong Guan. So I think uh, I grew along with him. Like He allowed me to grow as a trainer. What is one thing you hate about your job? Spill it, Yan. Oh my god. <laughs> Shall I? <laughs> when I went into being a mother, right? Wow. I wish the the environment I work in could be more understanding. Okay, like say for example, the COVID period, right? Some would have the choice to work at home, which is lovely if you're a mom. Like my kids had those stay at home assignments. So I'm like kind of split, you know? They've got no school, they've got no guidance from me, and they fell back in their studies actually. But I am needed at work. So that's the kind of like sacrifices you have to go through. Ooh, what are some of the worst assumptions about your job? I've heard friends tell me that you know, they are cleaning and then people say like, oh, if you don't study, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be sweeping poop and everything. People look at us like, wow, all she does is talk. That's all her job. So simple. Let's talk about the animals. Yeah. But they don't know what goes behind, like how we have to be trained for this. That example itself happened to a, a fellow keeper. And ooh, the person who pointed it out. Okay. Lion. Uh, oh, oh. Yes, yes. Normal thing, normal thing here. <laughs> Often, uh, the people who like make this kind of statements, like, you know, if you don't study hard, this is what you're going to become. Teachers. It is also um, contradicting that half the time they are introducing wrong animals to the children. Uh. Like rhino, say, look, look at the hippo. Ah, uh, like, you know this kind of thing. Jan, do you <laughs> think that zoos have lost its appeal over the years? Man, I'm like super biased on this one because I love the zoo. I feel the zoo went through like phases, you know? Like it transitioned over the years. Uh, the show had a charm of its own. Like I remember watching that show. I remember being lucky enough to present that same show when I first came in. I would say the zoo was much warmer back then. And then now it transitions to like upbeat and fresh. This yeah. is the only place you can see animals. The only place you can see us. Yes. How about a question for you? Uh, okay, mm. Give us harder ones. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Spill It. And if you enjoy it, don't forget to like and subscribe, okay? And join us. Bye! -bye. <laughs>